Hi folks, I'm Steve Hindy for Showing Animals Respect and Kindness. This is a follow-up to our effort to help dogs and roosters abused by a family in Oklahoma. Today, we feature a cop who absolutely should not be a cop. In May 2021, we were advised of dogs and fighting roosters kept in horrible conditions in the town of Bartlesville in Washington County. The Washington County Sheriff's Office was contacted numerous times, but even when officers personally witnessed the abuse, they refused to do anything to help. Well, we can't go onto people's property. That's a violation of Fourth Amendment right. Well, unless you, you have pro somebody's property without unless court. you have cause, we gave you cause huh. because we gave you video. Mounting public pressure forced the family to quickly move the animals to Nowata County. We hoped that the change of location would include better law enforcement in either the Nowata County Sheriff's Office or the Tribal Marshal Service. Unfortunately, the Nowata County Sheriff proved to be worthless and the Tribal Marshal Service is worse than worthless. I'm gonna focus on an August 2021 phone conversation between shark investigator Stu Chaffetz and deputy Tony Asbill, who is with the Tribal Marshal Service. Stu was calling to try to find the latest on the whereabouts and condition of the wren animals. I spoke to you in early June about an animal cruelty case involving some dogs and a man named Corbin Wren. But basically, I just wanted to find out whatever happened with that case. Well, uh, currently it's going nowhere. We, the, uh, we got a report from the veterinarian there and all the animals were within their normal tolerances except for one that had like a, a skin rash and that was due to some eczema or something like that. You saw those pictures with like the, the dog who looked like he's starving with the flies on the back, right? They, they're saying that there was no okay. problem with that dog? Uh, that's my understanding. I'm not a veterinarian, sir. I take their word for it. Okay, hold the phone. Eczema? I'm not a veterinarian, but if a vet tries to tell me that this dog doesn't have a serious issue requiring treatment, I am not going to just take their word for it because there's strong, contradicting video evidence. Continuing. Was there like a report or something we could get? Like a public report on this? Uh, it's not public, but no. Uh, you probably could go talk to the veterinarian there. Do, do you know what veterinarian it is? Or, or who we could talk to? Not offhand, I don't, sir. So there is a veterinarian report. But Asbill won't identify the vet and won't give us a copy of the report. Nice guy. Stu pushes on, trying to help Deputy Asbill act like a somewhat intelligent, responsive police officer. You saw that video. These dogs were like in horrible shape. It just seems so strange that suddenly a vet would say there's nothing wrong. Is there anything we can do about this? Because we have that video. About what? About what? I'm sorry, is Stu talking to a law enforcement officer or a steaming lump of Oklahoma cow shit? If you think that's a rhetorical question, listen to Asbill's next claim. Well, the thing about video, sir, it only shows one point of view, and that's your point of view, okay? Ah, uh, no, it's definitely not okay, Deputy Asbill. The video shows what it shows, and an apparently non-existent report from a mythical unnamed veterinarian doesn't counter this clear visual evidence. When a law enforcement professional makes such a ludicrous claim, that officer obviously shouldn't hold a badge for a kindergarten crossing, much less any kind of legitimate law enforcement. I have a report from a veterinarian that states the, state the animals were within their normal tolerances and I have to take people's word on stuff. Did you hear what he just said? I have to take people's word on stuff. Actually, deputy, you're a police officer. You're not supposed to just take people's word on stuff, especially when there's strong evidence to the contrary. The fact that Asbill and the Tribal Marshal Service will fold so easily in a case of obvious animal abuse indicates you, Asbill, are unfit for service. It's not our point of view. I mean, there was a, a horde of flies on the dog's back, and there were, you know, I mean, just, hey, hey, sir. So is this, there, this, this is Oklahoma, you know, flies right. are all over the place. All I can say at this point is, did somebody use this guy's head for a basketball when he was an infant? This guy was suspected of cockfighting. That's how we found him in the first place, because he had roosters there, too. It wasn't just the dogs. 
um, who are in pretty bad shape as well. Uh, sir, my father-in-law raises chickens, and he has roosters. That doesn't mean he's a cockfighter. Ah, the expressions of idiocy continue to spew out of Deputy Asbill's mouth like a case of explosive diarrhea. The facts are that Corbin Wren held a large number of trimmed fighting roosters, and that neighbors in Washington County personally witnessed cockfights at the Wren property. And here's a picture of Wren's father-in-law in a cockfighting hoodie. Given all that, Deputy Tony Asbill of the Tribal Marshal Service just can't imagine why we would suggest that cockfighting just might be involved here. The case is just dead at this point? It's a standstill, yes. No, it's not a dead case. I can assure Deputy Aspill of that. This case is only over when we say it's over. I was really incensed after I heard this call, so I tried calling Asbill. My name is Steve Hindy. I'm trying to reach investigator Asbill. I'm calling about Corbin Wren, and I would appreciate a call back. Asbill knew I wanted a call back. Asbill didn't call back. So he's not just an asshat, but he's a coward as well. I ended up calling Asbill's supervisor, Captain Scott Craig, and while Captain Craig wasn't as mind-bogglingly stupid and unprofessional as Deputy Asbill, he was of no help whatsoever. We've found a lot of vets that'll say things that aren't true. When you look at, like, that dog with your own eyes, did that really, that really line up with what the vet said? Uh, look, look, believe so it's not for me to say whether or not. That's not for me to say. What I go by is what the professionals tell us. According to this article in the October 22, 2016 edition of the Telequa Daily Press, Deputy Tony Asbill took the oath as a U.S. Marshal in 2016. So in five years, the Marshal Service hasn't rooted out this careless incompetent? That bodes very poorly for the entire U.S. Marshal Service. The Tribal Marshal Service is an organization that, like so many law enforcement agencies today, is not only ill-equipped to do the job, but far worse, its officers clearly don't care to make even a superficial effort. In closing, the Wren case remains open for us at Shark, and we will develop more information. And the issue will return to the public eye, and we will have a nice prepackaged story about how it all came to be, thanks to the inept carelessness of Oklahoma law enforcement, including the Tribal Marshal Service. I'm Steve Hindy for showing animals respect and kindness. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel to see more of our investigations and learn what you can do to help shark help animals. If you'd like to support shark directly and gain access to exclusive content, please consider sponsoring us on Patreon.